In this video I'm going to show you how to vectorize an image in CorelDRAW from a bitmap. Uh, in our case here we're going to be using a JPEG image and turn the entire image into a vector image that will be clean no matter what size we want to use it. Now we've done this before uh, in another video but this one will show you a few more techniques and the more designs that we can show you how to vectorize you'll learn a lot of techniques uh, to help speed up the process. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start by just going over here on my desktop I have a JPEG and I'm going to drag it over here and drop it on my CorelDRAW page. Um, as you can see this one's a little more complicated than the last one we done uh, but this one uh, will show us a few new things we can do. The first thing I'm going to do here and I usually do when I'm vectorizing something is as you can see the uh, bitmap is selected. I'm going to right click and I'm going to go down here to where it says lock object and I'm going to click that. Um, once I select off of that I won't be able to move that object and that just makes it a little bit easier to start working with here. Uh, so the uh, first thing I'm going to do with this as we can see it's it's basically um, the basic shape is a as a circle here so I'm going up here and get my ellipse tool and I'm going to start drawing an ellipse here um, uh, it pretty much is is a, is a circle it looks like to me so I'm going to hold down my control key which I've just pressed and now as I drag this out it uh, Corel will draw a perfect circle for me um, as long as that control key is down it will be perfect um, circle and we'll see if that matches up with this so that's approximately the right size there so I'm going to let up on my mouse button and then move it over top of uh, my background image and I will make the outline of that circle that we just drew I'll make that gold here so we can see it a little better and as we can see over on this side it doesn't quite match up uh, it's just a little bit out of shape uh, from our background image so I'm going to move it around a little bit here and see if we can't uh, get it to be a little better match. I'm going to make it a little bigger and it appears that that's not a perfect circle so we'll just go ahead and change that line that we just drew to match up with that. It's just not quite perfect so we'll just do it like now. If we zoom in we can see that line is now pretty much following the exact outline of that um, outer circle there. So the once we've got that line there the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and set our text and I'm going to pick my text tool here and up here I'm going to type um, exactly what um, our top line of text is which is Now we're going to kind of approximate here what font we think that is. We could adjust it later. Um, to me it looks like Arial, um, but it does look like it's been bolded. So we're going to go ahead and pick Arial Bold. Now that we've got our text in here, we can double check. Looks like everything is spelled correctly. Um, to get this on the circle, it's real easy. We're going to right click on the text and hold down that right mouse button and drag it. We'll drag it down to the circle that we just um, drew there and once we see our cursor change to that bullseye we can let up on it and that, that will give us a menu and we pick fit text to path. And as you can see our text now follows um, the circle that we drew. Now the next thing we need to do is um, let's kind of approximate uh, the size. I mean by default my corral drop um, defaulted to 24 points. We can tell it's bigger than that. We'll change this to 35 points. Uh, that's definitely a lot closer. I'm going to go ahead and go to 40 points which looks even closer. Now the next thing you'll notice is this is following the outside of this line. Um, we need it to be to the inside um, so it sits right on the text that's there. Again that's pretty easy to do as you can see this little, I'll zoom in on it, this little um, 
marker right here is highlighted in red and if we put our cursor on that we can drag our text to the inside so that the baseline of our current text will match up with the baseline of the text of our object and I'm going to go ahead and bring it around the circle also so that my T lines up and that will give us a better idea whether we've got the right size by looking at the outline of that T um, it looks like the size matches up pretty well our text is still highlighted here it actually matches up real well um, lengthwise around there I'm gonna go ahead and click on our uh, gold color over here uh, that did not work the way we wanted it we need to select just the text so we'll click on the text and then we'll click on the text again and if you notice down below here we have just the artistic text selected and then we can click on the gold and just the text will be turned gold now as you can see some of our letters are not kerned the same as they were in our background image uh, depending on how picky you want to be or how picky your customer maybe wants to be um, we can go ahead and adjust that um, by again our text is selected we can go up here and pick our shape tool which gives us our nodes um, along the bottom of the line where our letters start and we can move individually each letter uh, to match the background image. Now these letters will move along the circle. They're still attached to that circle so we don't need to worry about accidentally moving them up and down. Uh, we can actually just slide them along that curved line. And I will do a few of them here to give you an idea as I zoom in and out so I can see that handle a little easier. Again, it's a, it's a matter of preference and how much work you want to put into it and how much work you need to for whatever your finished product's going to be if the customer gives you a bitmap and you need to have a vector image to work from for your particular job. As you can see, um, some of the letters line up real well, some of them don't. Again, it could be a difference in slight difference in the style. It could be a matter of the kerning. Uh, we could have went in there and adjusted the kerning a different way, but for our example here, we're just going to get it close. And in my opinion, it actually is real close. I think this is very acceptable for most applications. So as you can see, our letters now real closely line up with what's in the background. So we're going to call that good enough, and what we will do is we're going to click back up here onto our pick tool. Uh, we're going to unhighlight everything or unselect everything and then I'm going to actually select or click on the letters again it gives us now the text on the path which basically means we have the text and the circle that is is binding that text we have them both selected we're going to go up to arrange and break text apart what we've done now is our text is now a circle but the line that we use to form that circle is now a separate object so our line is back here it's just an ellipse there's no text attached to it so what we're going to do is we're going to come down here and we're going to do this lettering so we're going to do just like that and our size we can go back up here and we're going to assume they're the same size this was 40 points so we're going to go ahead and take this to 40 points and if you remember we made it bold so these letters there should be pretty close to what was there so again we're going to do the same thing we're going to right click we're going to drag that up until our cursor uh, changes to a target we'll drop that right there a menu will pop up and we're going to uh, select text to path and as before um, our text came gets um, put onto this path um, it starts it in this orientation which is not really what we want we want it on the inside of our path and that's accomplished pretty easily by going up here uh, with our text selected go up here to our toolbar and we're going to mirror this horizontally and we're going to mirror it vertically um, as you can see it's now upside down up here well let's make this um, kind of a pink color so we can see it it's upside down up here but it the base of the letters is bound to the inside of it um, and we accomplished that by just mirroring it horizontally and vertically um, not still not in the right position but that's easy to solve by grabbing that 
um, that little red handle there we can drag that around um, it's now in the correct position uh, we can I'm gonna go ahead and drop it right there and then I'm gonna zoom in so we can fine-tune it a little better there's that handle again we'll drag it so that our baseline matches up with the baseline of the image in the background which there looks about perfect and from there our letters are pretty much exactly what we want we just need to get that spacing between the letters right I'm gonna go right back up here click our shape tool grab the handle of each letter that E looks pretty good the the S needs moved over we will move this S over and then we'll move this A over there and um, that matches up with the kerning that's there that may may not be the most ideal kerning to me right there but if that's what we're trying to match as the background then we've got we've got that job done so there we go we've got um, the top text the bottom text done we've got an outer circle that forms um, the outer edge of this black band right here um, so now what we need to do is we need to get this text off of that circle and I'll show you why in a minute but we're going to go back to our shape tool we'll deselect everything by clicking out here I'm going to click on the text again which gives us the text on the path so the path and the text is selected I'll go up here and break text apart now our text is still there it's an individual object we can change it I'll go ahead and make it gold so it looks uniform with that our circle that we drew initially is still there now what we need to do is we're just gonna move right on inside I'm gonna form this next circle right in here which is the boundary between the black and the white and the way I'm gonna do this is a little trick that I do um, we've got the outside one we want the inside one to be exactly the same I'm gonna put my cursor on one of the corners doesn't matter which one as you can see the cursor will turn to two arrows which means I can resize it I haven't clicked yet I'm gonna hold down my shift key and when I hold down my shift key you'll see that it turns into a little cursor with four arrows and what that means is it is going to shape this around the center of the object so as I drag this inside um, you can see that the center point of where I'm dragging this stays the same so it stays centered there so all I do is move this in till I get it the right size now we don't want to actually move that outside one in we need another copy so I simply as I'm holding down the left mouse button here I just click the right, right mouse button and you can see a little plus sign forms under my cursor that means that I'm making a copy so now I'll let up on everything and we now have an inner circle and an outer circle they're the same shape but even more importantly they're around the same center point no no need to center them they're both the same so these two lines don't do us much good individually um, to form this black area we have to have one object so we're gonna select that inner one I'm gonna shift click and select that outer one um, once I have that done we need to go up here to combine and what the combine will do is take those two together and form one object that one object then can have the fill property of our black background so I'll click on combine um, as you can see down below it we now have one curve and we're gonna make that background let's say we'll do a teal color here so it shows up so now this teal represents what was there in black our letters are there um, this jobs probably real close to being halfway done here or maybe more all we need to do now is to do this center um, pieces here um, I'm gonna start from the outside or from the top layer and work down it was, was way I'm gonna do this um, this star is not a perfect star so I'm not gonna use a star tool I'm gonna go up here um, get my bezier tool um, from my pen drop down box here and I'm simply going to put a point on each one of the corners of this star and we won't go back and and clean this up any and I don't know that we'd really have to once I make my way all the way around there um, putting a point we close it up by putting the last point on the first point and I'll go ahead and make that object gray so you can see what that shape looks like now if I did want to clean it up I could just click click on my shape tool um, maybe move this point over a little bit um, we could clean up uh, 
this straight line across there. We're going to call that good enough so we can keep moving on. So there we've got a gray star and I just made it gray so we could see. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is the next the way I visualize this anyway is the next layer down is this blue. Going back to that Bezier tool and I'm going to put a point on everywhere where this curve changes. I'm going to put a point there. I'm going to go over here and put a point and it may look a little odd because we just drew a straight line across there, but you'll see what I'm doing here in a minute. I'm going to go ahead and put a point on this one because this is where this curve changes from this direction to going back to here. And I'm going to close the object by putting a point on that beginning point. Okay, so really we only have three points that form this entire curve, which at this point looks like a triangle. Um, I'll make it gold so you can kind of see what it looks like. But we can stretch this into that curve actually very easily. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to up here to our shape tool. And now we can individually edit um, these nodes. And right now they're all lines because we didn't form them with curves. So I'm going to right click on this and we're going to change it to a curve. The first thing I'll do is once it's a curve we can see our curve handles here. I will drag this side of the curve up to try to match our blue as close as we can like that. You can see that kind of follows that curve. Uh, we can tweak it a little bit if we have to. Then we would grab this curve handle and we bring it out here until this side kind of matches up with our curve. And we won't get too carried away here but we want to make sure that it's pretty close to what we want. So that straight line with just a few clicks and drags, we've now got that into that top curve. Um, so now we've got to match this bottom one here. Uh, we can't see through this, but we know what was under there. So I'm going to right click on this line, make this a curve. And again, I'm going to try start with one part of this, which is we're going to go ahead and match that up like that. And I've clicked off of my object. There's my handles. And we'll use that to match up the curve that's underneath of it. So we've got that. So we'll call that one done. We do the same thing over here. Click on it. Right click, which brings up our menu. We go down here to curve. And then we drag this line down. I always try to start by matching up one side first. I'm matching up what's on the right side. This here follows the curve pretty well. Then I can just use this handle to reshape this side of the curve. And if that adjusts this a little bit, I may have to grab this handle then to, to fix it a little bit. Or we can just grab that and bring that down. So now this gold here represents what is blue underneath. So we're going to go ahead and change it to blue. And as you can see, our star is gone because it is actually underneath this. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Control Page Down, which moves that blue down one layer and puts the star on top. So the only thing left here is the red, and we're going to handle it just like the blue. We're going to put a point on each one of the corners. So there's one there, one there one there and we're going to close our shape right back where we started. Again we have our little triangle. We're going to up here get our shape tool. Start with any one of the pieces you want or the segments you want and we'll make that a curve. Drag this curve over to form the shape of the one side right there and then use our handle there to finish up that shape. We go right down here to the next one, make this a curve. Let's start with this side. That looks pretty good there. Then drag this handle around and move it until you see that line line up with that one. Right click, curve. I'm matching the top one up first. Bring this handle down until that curve matches. We now have a red line or a red piece to go with that. So basically, um, other than coloring, we have duplicated this design. I'm now going to uh, marquee select everything that I've made. We'll drag it off of that background image. The background image is locked, so we're not going to be moving that. And as you can see, uh, we have a very close representation without very much messing at all. Uh, 
with what we had before. If there's any problems with the curves or anything like that, we could go back in individually, edit these pieces, and make them match our original better. The last thing I'm going to do here, we'll click on here, we'll make this black, make that white, and then we'll make our lettering white. And we have a nearly perfect representation of this bitmap. As you can see, this was a bitmap when we started. You can see our our fuzzy edges there. And when we look at this one, we have a good-looking vector image. Um, this blue actually has a white or black outline, which we don't need. We can right-click that off. Um, but that will show us. Uh, from here, we would just have to tweak this a little bit. What I would do here is I would move this red up to match that blue shape and any other tweaking we had to do would be minor compared to the the project that we started with which was a fairly simple logo but fairly complex in some people's eyes so there we've made a vector object in about 20 minutes um, and gave you all the instructions so hopefully you learned a few techniques that will help you vectorize your artwork uh, pretty quickly thank you